So this is my basic setup for uh, processing IC chips with incineration. Um, many routes you can go, you can pyrolyze them first, um, but they'll still need to be incinerated. Uh, guys go to ball mills and such. I, uh, I have this screen on top of this heavy duty pan and I have my chip material um, and I also use a torch. Um, my torch is beat up because it's been left out here in the weather. It's been raining heavy, but I torch these chips, and I'm going to show you how I do it here. Let me load this up, and I'll be back. So I have the torch ready. Got my chips in the basket. Not too many, about a, two handfuls just to start. The idea is to keep the heat on them, and as the uh, toxic gases come off, the heat should burn the toxic gases before they're released thus creating just maybe a black smoke that isn't too nasty smelling uh, if you're not doing it good enough that will smell As you see, when they're not quite done, they'll smoke and make that, so you want to keep that flame on them. So what you're left with is ash white chips. It's exactly what you're looking for. Um, sometimes they don't burn all the way, and they still keep a little bit of a gray or dark color. But when you get them white white like that, that's the ticket, man. Let me finish up this batch here, and I'll come back for the next step. Quick look at these uh, incinerated chips before they go into the mill. Uh, they're very, very hot right now. They're gonna have to cool down for a while. So when these uh, cool off, we'll get the next part set up. I'll show you how to get these things into dust. So we uh, have added the uh, chips. I uh, took the liberty of crushing them with my hand somewhat. Um, even with that, a lot of these chips like these fatter thick ones will not will not be too affected by this mill it's more for the real ashed ones these are quite hard I can't even break it with my finger um, might not have been properly incinerated completely the insides a little black and outsides white of course but uh, not a big deal I'm gonna run it through this first and uh, after I set this up I'll show you how it works Notice I do have some media in here, and the chips are all ready to go. Let me fix this up, and I'll be right back. Okay, it's set up. That's all there is to it. I let this uh, run for about 5-10 minutes, and I'll check on it. Okay, so I've ran this for maybe about a good 7 minutes. With uh, with this amount of material in here, it's a five-pound rock tumbler. It gets hot. I've had this for a while, and I actually ran it too long one time, and it popped the washer right through there because it was so hot. But uh, as you can see in there, a lot of the uh, chip material has been ash real nice, and. Uh, you notice these bigger pieces up here. I uh, I usually reserve this uh, rock tumbler for like BGA, very thin flat packs, uh, and RAM chips. Um, it has no problem turning all of it into ash. I uh, rarely have to uh, grind it after that. But this one was a bunch of mixed chips, and a lot of them were pretty good size. Um, I'm going to set up my uh, grinder and... Uh, 
show you how I uh, take care of these and I'll also show you how to sift these. Alright guys, so uh, the material comes out of the ball mill and the first thing I want to do is get out my media and I use a coarse sieve um, in doing this. It'll do a couple of things. It will uh, allow the uh, material to go through that is uh, small enough and it'll capture the bigger stuff that we're going to end up putting over here and we're going to end up grinding it. Um, work through it. If you get bigger pieces that fall into this, it's alright. Because we're far from done. This material is far from uh, being totally classified the way that we want to set it up into the uh, sluice. And there's quite a bit. You notice in here, there's a lot of split pieces, the full metal jackets that are left within the uh, chips themselves. <clears throat> Guaranteed all the gold dust is falling through that's That's in here right now um, The dust that comes off of this is Not good to breathe so it's best to be outside with this kind of stuff um, Keep safety in mind as always you know gloves and a mask even is ideal because uh, These dust from this I believe contains beryllium and uh, beryllium will kill you But patience is key. You know, you uh, dig out the balls, dump the solids, and this right here is going to get its own classification. Um, the inside of this ball mill or a uh, rock timbler is going to collect dust, and that dust will have gold. You know. Gold is very small in these chips. But from there, what I like to do is I'll take this dust and I will run it through this classifier, 100 mesh classifier, and I'll put my mesh right on top of my bucket. And I'll take my ash. And I will run this through. Everything that comes through this will be ready for the sluice. Anything that does not go through this is going to end up going back into the big solids. And it's going to get put into the, my food processor. Where it's going to chop everything down into uh, nothing. So let me uh, finish this up and I'll show you the next step. This is my uh, modified basic food processor. Um, I used to use coffee grinders. This thing's pretty heavy duty. I put the chips in just like that. Um, no need to really show it in motion. You know, you put the lid on. I always have a catch basin because it leaks out somewhat. And uh, But what I want to do is definitely show you what it looks like before. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so I ran this for a couple minutes or whatnot. Notice when I take this lid off, there's probably going to be some dust coming out. See that? It's definitely an outdoor thing, man. Um, I have a... This comes right off. And uh, what I am left with... Is some pretty fine powder. Um, just like that. I ran half of them, I ran half of them uh, on the first run, I'll load these up and we'll finish this up. Okay, so the material that came out of this ball, out of this rock tumbler, the material that's been ran through the grinder is all sitting right here. Um, what I like to do is I like to run it through here one more time and I'll show you why. Give me a minute. As I sift it through this coarse strainer. You're going to notice tons of iron in there. 
You see that? And little black bits of uh, chips still. Um, even with the grinder, it doesn't get it all. And what I want to do is re-grind it one more time. So, Okay, out of the uh, last grind, we have uh, the iron legs that fell through. The white squares are the silicon dies. And this is bulk majority of your metal. Um, there's a few small little bits of epoxy. But uh, seeing all of these glass dies that are ground up and beat up, you know, them bond wires stick to the glass dies, not to the main leg of the uh, irons that come out of the chips and whatnot and this and that. That small little bit, I guarantee, is is uh, going to be in the majority of this dust, and it's not going to be in here, you know. Uh, that's basically trash, and what's left, I will take, and I will put it in here and I will run it through my uh, 100 mesh and I'll show you the results. Give me a minute. Okay, so the uh, material that does not go through this 100 mesh is pretty much all your iron. Um, there's some shiny pieces of silicon dye and there is also little bits, just a little bit of balls here and there, little chip balls, pretty small. You know, I've, no expert, but I've also, uh, I've been running chips like this for a long time, and uh, I have a microscope, and I'll take these and look through them, uh, take a good sample, put it on a plate, paper plate, and put on my light and put on the scope and I'll, I'll inspect this now if I see a bond wire here and there I might be like damn you know if I see if I put the scope down in this and I see at least five in just one scope view I know I'm missing out because I know within that five there's a hundred million in here probably but if I do that and it takes me it takes me a, a couple passes just to find maybe one or maybe two man I'm I'm honestly I promise you I'm not gonna worry <laughs> you know we don't get it all anyway we do our best but I'm telling you now I've uh, I've spent hours trying to perfect at least how I'm doing these everyone has their own way but you know I I remove my iron by doing this you know sure there's gonna be a little bit that got through this hundred mesh from shaking it and whatnot, but it's such a minimal amount that when I'm in the sluice running it, I'll put a hard drive magnet across the top and skim across it, and it'll pick out what's left, and um, it'd be less than what could fit in a in a spoon, you know, maybe 20 pieces at most. So this is classified material, um, ready for the poop shoot. Let me set that up and I'll show you how we do it. Okay, so I've taken my uh, powder and transferred it to this clean bucket. And uh, I've added water and uh, some people use jet dry, some people use different uh, detergents or whatnot. For me, I just use a few drips of Dawn. Um, the consistency of it is like a runny cake. Um, because what I'm going to be doing is spooning it into this uh, sluice. It's a 10 foot piece of pipe. Down at the end I have a uh, catch bucket with holes on the top. Any gold that may slip through will go into there. Once it fills up enough I have a secondary catch. There's never any gold in that. Never. Um, my uh, let's put it this way. My uh, slope to it is Gradual but not steep. Um, I've done this uh, a few times uh, to uh, perfect my level where I want and what I like. Um, and then uh, playing with the water pressure is definitely key. Too much slope, too much water pressure, you're going to wash gold. Ideally, when you put a spoon of material in here, 
for the first, say, four feet at most, you should have ribs that catch all your gold. Further on down, you should have some copper bits and metals that are heavy but washing out slowly. And at the end, you'll have nothing but maybe a little bit of powder. Um, I'm going to get this set up and start running, and then I'll show you what it looks like, what I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, I have my water pressure set up. Running down at the end. And what we do, take a spoon of material, and I just put that spoon in. Um, it's going to be hard to see this material getting sluiced. I'm using one hand and uh, trying to film and the sun's already starting to go down to where you cannot see exactly what's going on. But uh, let me run a little bit of this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you could see that little spot right in the center, it's gold bond wires. And uh, like I said, man, it's starting to, sun's starting to drop down and it's hard to really get a good light. But uh, once I uh, get it running just right and I see what I'm doing, I'll take it and in fact pour a little bit in there. Just pour a little bit. A couple spoons worth maybe. Saves time. And then I just let this thing run. I always come down here check my check my sluice um, I look in these ribs as it's running and I look for any color coming through besides copper say um, with these chip material it's you know medium to uh, low grade chips it's not any kind of BGA or you know high high yield chips but uh there we go I'm getting a better view it's a reflection of the of the water probably but you can see that color and there's gold uh, once you can see that gold pour in a little bit more and you just be patient man be patient and just let this run see it's got ash in there you can't see it no more but that's it man let me uh, get both of these hands running uh, barbecue is gone you see them flames under the lid man it's uh pause this up and uh, cook up some gr some grub real quick I'll be back all right guys so shut this water down um, I've completely ran the uh, bowl and uh, this is my gold concentration from those uh, chips <clears throat> Um, it's low grade chips, uh, you know, I didn't weigh them out, I would say it was roughly two pounds, maybe two and a half, so yield expectancy on chips like this, from my experience, is about a half a gram to 0.75 per pound, so if I got a gram and a half out of this, I would be pretty, pretty alright with that, um, as you see, I'm going down, and there's uh, some stuff that I'm uh, showing you right here. This looks color, but it's, in fact, copper pieces, copper dust. Um, it, is, it isn't gold in this. Um, it looks kind of the same as up above. But these, uh, these ripples... I have my light on on this camera to show because it's getting a little dark, but this is no gold in here. Um, it's just dust and and uh, bits of copper. Um, but going back up to the top, this guy's in fact is gold. You can see the bond wires. You can see the yellowest. Um, what I do is <laughs> need to perfect it a little more, but um, I have to rinse this out. Um, guys use snuffer bottles. Uh, 
I just put the water pressure on a little higher and I put my angle more steep. I actually run it into uh, this clear, clear bucket here and uh, get all my concentrates into here. Once I do, I'll transfer it to a beaker and I'll show you what we do next. So we have the uh, concentrates right here. <clears throat> you see that color in there? There's a gold. We're going to process this, give it a dilute nitric uh, uh, cook first so we can eliminate base metals and uh, go from there. Okay, this uh, chips look to be done. This was a uh, dilute nitric leach on these uh, icy chips. Um, the color that you see is the uh, base metals that were present that were uh, dissolved in this. Um, I forgot to do my magnet over the uh, chip material to rid it of any possible iron that may have gotten in but when I did concentrate it it didn't look very much like I needed to so next step will be to decap this liquid um, and create AR and dissolve the gold in the chips. Okay the uh, AR is uh created and it's been cooking for about 10 minutes. Um, I'll wait for all of the uh, reaction bubbles to uh, stop. You can uh, look at the bottom, swirl it around and uh, see if all of the uh, gold has uh, dissolved. I would show you but I have one hand right now. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, simmer finish uh, dissolving gold and then uh, show you the next step alright man so uh, this AR is finished uh, the chip material is all dissolved um, reaction is stopped what I'm going to do now is uh, use some sulfamic acid to denox the uh, free nitrate that may be present um, I do it while it's hot A little bit, not much. Give it that stir, let it do its thing. That's about it, man. There wasn't much nitric in there. As you see, adding more sulfonic did not react. The next thing that I like to do is I add a uh, some sulfuric. This will uh, precipitate out any lead that was present. Just put a few drips, a couple of nails. And last but not least, because I'm always in a hurry, got some ice. Uh, go ahead and let those uh, melt cool this solution down for filtering and uh, it's got a really nice color for <laughs> excellent color for uh, doing a first drop um, get my filter set up and uh, I'll be back okay we have the uh, filter set up vacuum pump I'm running a uh, number two wetman filter um, looks kind of darkish green, but that solution is absolutely beautiful. Um, I let this uh, <clears throat> filter through, and then I will rinse this beaker and wash the uh, ash material that's left. Through this, uh, through this very good filtering, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back. Uh, you see, the uh, filter is some silica and bits of ash, and uh, solution is a yellow to yellowish green color. Um, 
I could have uh, probably used my better filter than the wet man and this solution is it's cloudy um, I'm sure there's chlorides in there you know I used uh, tap water um, in a hurry with this vid it doesn't matter man this is a first drop uh, this is all part of just the recovery in my sense I will uh, drop this gold and I will take the powder and uh, refine it um, so let me uh, get my SMB ready and I'll be back so I uh, mixed up some uh, SMB with this uh, water and uh, add it to a solution give it a second to react Whoa. not a fast crazy drop like I like but uh wonder if it's making a liar out of me. <laughs> there it goes. So not a uh, crazy dark reaction. But, uh, nonetheless, it's doing its thing. We'll let this uh, settle for a while and uh, come back after it's all dropped. Um, kind of thinking I didn't add enough SMB, but you know, I'm only expecting like a gram. I'll go ahead and be patient, let this thing uh, finish doing its thing, and I'll come back after it's settled. Okay, so I uh, tested the solution. I must have added a little bit too much SMB. That's a false positive. Um, let it finish settling down. I uh, got impatient. There's some more still going to drop, so I'll go ahead and just let that chill. Um, <clears throat> took the majority of it. And uh, there's the gold, man. I'm going to clean it up and uh, dry this up and then we'll get a weight. What I'm doing here is a uh, little bit of HCL. I'm going to give it a HCL boil. Uh, clean up some of the uh, gold powder and then I'll uh, follow it by a uh, hot water boil. And then we'll dry it up. Okay, so we have a uh, melted powder, I mean uh, dried powder, and uh, our scale, let's see what we yielded from these uh, chips. 1.82, so 1.8, uh, lighting in here is pretty dark and ugly, but uh, 1.8 grams from those uh, ICs um, I didn't get a weight on those so yeah man uh, 1.8 from these uh, chips this is just recovered gold it's uh, not sure exactly uh, you know like I said the weight to these to begin with uh, the IC chips and, you know I said about a gram gram and a half it's 1.8 so you know that's the uh, process guys uh, take your time uh, perfect it go through it take your time like I said I can't stress enough be safe 
um, reviewing the videos, you know, I was outdoors with that dust, and it's still, you know, dusty, and that shit will mess you up, man, you know, I started to get it in my face a little bit, and I'm like, fuck, man, I need to be wearing my mask, you know, you gotta be safe with this shit, but, uh, there it is, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it, uh, don't forget to subscribe, and, uh, more videos to come, Sunny Ewes, out, man.